I spent the last few days testing how to truly control AI generation for consistent video results in Comfy UI. While the community treats it like rocket science, this truth is simple. Using just the one tool workflow and the one fan control net model, I achieve stunning video to video consistency that opens the door to cinematic level storytelling. And if you stay focused till the end, I'll reveal how I used a single image and a control net pose to generate wildly different video themes and why this might change everything we thought AI animation was capable of. So would this be useful for your project? To get started, first let's download the model from the Hugging Face page. On the page here, select Files and Versions. Down here, click and download the Diffusion PyTorch model. Then save this into your directory under Comfy UI, go to Models. Diffusion models. I have already saved this here and changed the name to make it easier to find. Next, the VAE clip and text encoder are the additional models needed. So to grab these extra models, you have to visit my previous video, which went into much more detail about everything. Following that, go to your directory, then update Comfy UI by using the updates.bat file. Right click, then open to run it. I attempted to use Gitpo and the manager in Comfy UI, but this did not work well. Once this is completed, we open Comfy UI. Ensure you already have these custom nodes installed, otherwise you can install them. Once you have everything in place, let's start with the ControlNet video workflow. Double click on the canvas, search load video. I'll click here to choose my reference video. I'm using a stock video of this surfer. Uh, next, we right click to add a node, control net preprocessors, go to face and poses, select DW pose. I'll be using two control nets. Most of you always ask for two control nets and I'm using the depth anything V2. Connect the reference video node, then connect it into the depth preprocessor. To merge the control nets, right click to add a node. We go down to image, post processing, select image blend node. I'll drag this down. Let's link the open pose, then drag the depth into image two of the node. So let's go ahead to see a preview of the results. To do this, search video, then select the video combine node. Connect the image blend node, then I'll go ahead to change a few settings here, FPS to 25. I'll create a project folder to save all my videos. And for the file format, I'll set it to H264. Everything else will be fine. I'll go ahead to adjust the strength of the control net using the image blend. So I'll set this to 0.8. And now let's go ahead to run Q prompt to see the control net results. All right, this is all easy, right? The depth and open pose are both extracted and the motion is good. Now let's apply this to our prompt. Do you automate your workflows to avoid constant changes? If not, let's create a simple one. I'll add a primitive node for all the values we want to change our head. I'll change this to fixed, make two copies of the node. I'll create a bit more room here. Uh, double click and rename the first node to the width. I'll change the value to 480. Rename the second node to height. For a vertical ratio, I'll adjust this to 832. Then we also rename the third node to frames. I'll use 65 frames for the video duration. Now let's link the nodes to apply changes to every node at once. I'll right click to add node, KJ nodes, go to set. Recreate the nodes twice more. Then I'll connect the width into the set node. Click on constant, rename this to width. I'll connect the height in the same manner. Then let's do the same for the frames. Connect this, set the constant to frames. All right, now that all the boring part is done, let's easily connect these nodes. Uh, go to the load video node. Make sure fall size here is set to custom. Right click on the video node, go to convert widgets to input. Select custom width to input. Then do the same for the height, select custom height to input. And also let's convert the frame load cap into an input as well. Right click to add another node, KJ nodes, go to get. Make two copies of this to get three nodes. I'll connect the first node into the input width, then change the constant to width. Do the same for the height as well, select height. Then let's connect the frames, do the same, select frames. 
I'll go ahead to zoom out from here. Let's highlight all the nodes. I'll use Control G to create a group. Can you see how all of this could save you time? Now let's go ahead to build a simple one-two workflow to generate a video. We need a load diffusion model. We need a load clip and also search for load VAE node. This is similar to my image to video process, which you can check later. Now let's go ahead to choose the one fan control net model. This should be the model we downloaded earlier. For the load clip, select the model T5 XXL FP8. Then let's change the type to one. Load VAE, we need to select the one two VAE model. Now the clip will go into the clip text and code as the positive node. Change the color to green as usual. Make a copy of this as the negative node and do not forget to join this. Uh, let's right click to add a node. We go to conditioning, go to video models, select one fan control to video. In our previous video, we used the image to video node. Then connect the positive into the positive and negative into the negative. Drag out from the clip vision, then select clip vision and code. Then drag this out, select load clip vision node. Make sure to choose the one model here, which is clip vision H. Next, I'll reroute the model from the diffusion model to find the K sampler. Then let's match the positive into the positive. We do the same for the negative, then the latent. The VAE, I'll use the everywhere node as always to seamlessly link to each VAE input. Uh, let's move to the right of the canvas. After the K sampler, we need a VAE decode to see the video results. So I'll quickly swing up to the control net group. I'll duplicate to use the video combine node uh, because I want to keep the same settings for the video generation. I'll change the file name here, but you can use whatever you prefer. Then let's join the VAE decode node. So are we on the right track? We have two workflows. Let's combine these together. Go to the control net workflow. I'll suggest you resize this again. Also, I'll change the width into an input and I'll do the same for the height also into an input. Right click on the node, uh, select get node. I'll duplicate this down. We already have the value set. Then let's link both of them for the width and the height. Cool so far. I'll make some more room here. Now drag from the image blend into the resize node. Then from the resize node, I'll reroute this down to join the clip vision and code. From the same reroute, we send this to the control video input for the one two video node. Uh, let's also go ahead to change the three widgets we have here into inputs so we can still use the same set values we have before. The width goes into the width. We set the height also goes into the height. Then we link the frames into the frames. I'll zoom out from here. To keep things well organized, let's arrange these nodes into different groups, just to make the process more simple to follow along with. All right, so this looks cleaner, right? Now, are you ready to test this? I'll zoom onto the positive node. I'll paste my prompt in here. I want to see a man gliding above the sky in the clouds following the same motion. I'm using a default negative prompt here from one. Then let's move to the K sampler. I'll use a simple seed here. I'll change this to fixed. For CFG, I'll use six. All right, so I believe everything is set from here. I'll go ahead to Q prompt. Let's see the first video and the control net motion. All right, so we have cool results. We can see that the video was generated following the same motion. However, this is far from what we want to achieve. So how do we solve this? Instead of allowing a random video generation, what if we could make any image the subject? Before we do that, I would like to add a few more advanced nodes to improve the results of the video. So double click here, let's search for clip layer guidance. I will adjust the settings here that worked well for me. Next, add node, KJ nodes, Tcash, select one video Tcash. This will speed up the process while preventing visual quality loss.
Following that, let's search for CFG. Choose CFG zero star. Additionally, let's also search for model sampling. We go for SD3. So this controls the overlap from the previous frames, making the video less jerky. And the connection is easy. Link from the load diffusion model by joining them into each other. Now I'll drag from the model sampling. Then before the case sampler, I'll search for one video. Select one video enhance here. This will help us to increase more clarity in the generated video. Let's go ahead to connect this into the case sampler. Link the latent down from the one two video node. Let's zoom out from here. I'll give all of this a purple color. Let's group this as well. Now, are you ready to move forward and stay focused? We have reached the exciting moment. Let's generate an image to use for the motion. So I'll move up here to open a new canvas. I'll use a different workflow to generate the image. This is a basic Flux control net workflow. So you can check most of my control net videos using Flux to achieve this. I'll go ahead to bypass the groups here. Let's move up here. Then I'll use the load image node. Take the first frame of the reference motion we used earlier, drop it in here. Then using any of the control net preprocessors, extract the depth, open pose, or any control net from the image. So I'll go ahead to Q prompt to get the pose. Following that, go ahead to use a prompt you want to generate the image or the subject using the control net guidance. Uh, let's bypass this here, Q prompts to get an image. From here, I got a few more variations using the same process experimenting. You can have as much control net influence as you want, then you can save the image. This is what will be animated by one two. So back to the workflow, let's set all of this down here. I'll use the load image node, then drag your generated image in here. I chose to use bars from my variation images. So let's use a resize node to be sure the dimensions are always right. I go ahead to add get node, then let's connect these similar to how we've been using this method. This speeds things up, right? Now to connect this image, drag the image into the start image inputs of the one two fun to video node. I'll highlight to select these Control G to create a group. Do not forget to update the prompt. So let's do that. Zoom in here. I'll select and replace this. Since we are using our main subject now, I'll use the same prompt from the still image we generated. Also, you can always come here since we already set the values to update the frames. From here, I believe we have everything set. So let's go ahead, come up here and hit Q prompt. During my generation, this was still fast with a running time, but I'm gonna speed this up and I'm using a 3060. Okay, so all of this is done. Let's see what we get. This is amazing, stunning, and way too impressive, right? This is a really outstanding display of One Two's consistency and smooth motion. So additionally, you can also lower the CRF up here from 19 for a higher quality. So I still went ahead to test this with my previous generated characters. Previously, there was no control over the character's movement. However, we can see here how consistent the background remains while controlling the character's actions using this process. If you experience any bad results like this, play with the blending values. Also, you could use just a single control net. The results are still decent. So I hope all of this is helpful to you guys. And I'm curious to know, would you try this setup for your project? Don't forget to leave a like as always. And in this video, I also share how to easily get started with one two to create beautiful visual stories that spark the imagination. And I'll see all of you in the next video.